Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, are you ready for us to call for that daily bread? Say this with me. Say, Father, I demand, like Jesus said, for my daily bread today. I receive it right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let every angel that walks in these regards See to it that I receive it now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Expect a miracle today. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we honor you for today's broadcast. Thank you for your truth. It is marching on. And just like you said, the gate of hell will not prevail against the church. Thank you for the glory of your word. And even right now, I declare every body is lifted and every yoke is destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Spirit of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now, we are talking about counting it for joy. Count it for joy. And we are reading from James chapter 1 and verse 2. I'll read that again. It says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this, see, that's why you count it all joy. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. And verse 4 says, But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, one thing nothing and i've been telling you up till yesterday patience is very important in your work with god there is no one who had walked with god now, now people have received miracles from the lord people have shared testimonies of mighty provision mighty deliverance you know you know even in your life you know maybe you've been you've been born again for several years now and and you've seen testimonies and testimonies but you find out that there are people who despite the testimonies they have received they still face challenges where their faith is concerned so you want to ask so so how you know sometimes people say lord when is this whole faith thing believing god when is it going to end and <laughs> the truth about it is it's never going to end it's never going to end. Why? God is a faith God. So don't ever think you will get to that point where you say, Ha, ah, finally. Ah, now nah, I don't have to live by faith again. Hey, you know what you're saying? You actually say, now nah, I don't have to please God again. Because the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. So when you walk with God, He takes you from one faith to another. See? Now, that's why you also should see a progression in your faith walk with God, not you being in the same spot. You know, you, you may have started out believing God for um, food to eat. Yes, but it gets to the point where that is not an issue again, even though it's still by faith. But, but when it comes to food, you don't, you don't even think, uh, uh, should I pray? No, 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 no. But then you grow to something higher. Maybe this time around, you, you are releasing faith to feed the whole community. Now, that's what you're thinking about. That's when your, your, your thoughts are like, Lord, how, how are we going to get this thing done? You know, Jesus fed 5,000 people with five loaves and two fishes. Lord, how, how do we get this thing? How, how do we receive a miracle for this community? That's what you begin to think. Because... You can never, God will not even allow you. But you see, what we're talking about now is how you move from that 
first grade of faith to higher levels of faith. Now, before you go to every other stage of faith, this is going to happen to you. Your faith is going to be tried. Now, what makes, what happens? Why, why do people say, okay, my faith is being tried, you know, five years down the line, my faith is still being tried um, where, where finances, this particular need is concerned. I'll tell you why. It's because patience have not been found in you. Now, what then is patience? A lot of people have this idea, patience is just waiting. <laughs> no, you can wait without being patient. You can wait without being patient. You can wait for many hours, yet you have no iota of patience in you. How? Throughout that waiting period. Because you, you, maybe you went somewhere you, and you went to get something from someone and it's so important that you have to get that thing. And the person kept you waiting and waiting and waiting until five hours later, the person shows up and gives you what you're looking for. Now, you waited for five hours. And someone, someone said, you waited there for five hours? I, I did do. So you must be patient too. Not necessarily. If all the time you were waiting there, you were busy, Oh, I have many things to do. Can you imagine? But if I leave now, what if he comes when I leave? Ha, ah, oh, oh, okay. Let me, ah, let me just wait. Let me just wait. And you may even sit down there and sleep off and wake up. Ha, ah, two hours. Has he come? No. Ah, ah, what kind of thing is this? Eh? Why, why can't somebody just keep? And you keep talking and complaining and complaining and complaining. And then five hours later, oh, he's coming. He's, ah, praise God. Hey, thank God. Thank God. Thank God. And then he comes and says, ah, you, oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, you came for the, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, he says, ah, thank you, ah, thank you. And someone else thinks you're patient. You were not patient, <laughs> praise God. You were not patient, but you waited. Say, so if, if I was not patient, what would make me wait? No, you don't understand what patience is. I'll tell you what patience is. And, and this is what defines your growth and stability as a child of God. Now, that's why James is telling you, count it a joyful thing when your faith is tried because that trying is producing patience in you now so what is patience now I'll use the same illustration now you went somewhere to 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 look for someone and the person is not around you're sitting there and you are waiting now you may start out like how long do you think i, I don't know he just said he will, he will come to the office today okay so you're waiting and 30 minutes this person hasn't come. And then you figure out that, look, I can't live here until I get this thing from this person. Okay, fine. So what do I do? And then you begin to look around. And then you find a library there. And then you say, oh, um, can I please see that book? You say, oh, okay, you can have it. I just want to go through it. Oh, you can, you can, you know. And then you take that book, you sit down there, and then you begin to scroll through the book and then you find it interesting then you begin to read and, and read and read and read now you get to that point where you're so engrossed in the book and you you actually you know not remember that you are actually waiting for someone because now something else has gotten your attention while you are waiting in that place you see and then why reading that book, lots of knowledge is coming to you. Stuff is coming to you. There is no iota of worry. There is no iota of doubt in your heart. You know, you are just there reading and, and like, whoa, wow, I need to take some notes. And then you begin to take some notes. Like, whoa, wow, I never knew this thing before. Okay. And then you keep reading and reading and reading and you may even finish one book. And like, ah, wow, you've got some nice books. Can I see this other one? And you, and then the next thing, oh, he, he's here. Oh. Praise God. And then, now, what has happened? That period you were waiting, you applied patience. Patience is now your ability to enjoy your waiting. You fill it with so much activity that you enjoy the waiting. Now, guess what? Someone else walks out of that place and says, can you imagine that man? He wasted five hours of my time. And someone says, he wasted five hours? Yeah. Then you are patient too. No. 
Now, you are not going to say that man wasted five hours. Rather, you say, I went to that man's of men. Thank God I went there. I read a book that men transformed my reasoning concerning this. You know what? I'm going to apply this. Now, you see, you went there to see someone and then something else happened while you were waiting. Now, that thing that happened while you were waiting brought about experience for you. There's a scripture that says exactly what I just said now. Romans. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. It says the love of God is shed abroad in our heart. Romans chapter 5. Verse. Yeah. Romans 5 and verse 2. Let me start from verse 2. Yeah. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein you stand and rejoice in in hope of the glory of God. I look at verse 3. It says, And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also. Not this now. It says, We glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Now, it's actually saying trials works patience. So when you are tried, when your faith is tried, Patience is worked out in you. Now, what? look at what it says. And patience, experience. So, patience produces experience. Now, that's exactly what I was talking about. Praise God. Patience, I told you, while you are spending that time well, not just waiting, it is producing experience. See, another illustration. You're traveling maybe from Abuja to Lagos. And then, on your way, you got a flat tire and then you open your boots and you realize there's no spare. So like, whoa, how am I going to fix this now? And then you start flagging every car, a lonely place. You start flagging every car. Nobody's willing to stop and you try it after one hour. Nobody. And you're like, whoa, what do I do now? Um, you want to make a call? No network on the phone. <sighs> what do I do? Should I write something and say help or oh, <laughs> what? And then you begin to, and then you now relax and scan the whole area. And then you now sit down into the bush, sort of. There, there seem to be some hurts and like there's a settlement or a village not so far away. Like, whoa, how can people be living in this kind of a place? And they're like, I, I really like to see. And then you now like, well, since nobody's helping me, let me see if I can find a human being there that can tell me where the next village or the next organizer is. And then you, you get in there and you see this community of people. And then before you know what's happening, you learn something new. Now, at the end of the day, you just be like, and I, I think I know why my car had to spoil in this place because I needed to experience what I just experienced in this place. Now I know something about a group of people I ne never knew before. I know there's a village in this place that... Now, understand this about life. And, and if you've been listening to me, you must have heard me say this many times recently. The Bible says time and chance happens to everybody. The race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. This is what happens to everyone. Time and chance. Now, what does that tell you? Nothing happens in your life by mistake. Nothing. And you've got to believe me now. Nothing happens in my life that is a mistake. Everything is carefully thought out by God and by the angels. According to your script in life, the angels work out things around you. So you, you by chance meet somebody today. And you don't know that this person, maybe a situation caused both of you to meet. And you don't realize that this meeting, you will see the effect of it in five years' time. That's how life is. Now, that's why you need patience. Because sometimes you are trapped in a situation. And then you are just moody and, and shouting at everybody, angry with everybody. Why? Because you, you, can't, you can't bear that waiting. You can't bear that waiting. 
Oh, the car stops or a nice tasha. What do you mean? Maybe you have a driver. What do you mean? You mean you forgot to put in the spare tire? You mean you didn't check the spare tire before we started traveling? You mean this? You mean that? Come on, you are very stupid. You are, you know, and then instead of you to allow that, that's what James told us. Let patience have her perfect work. Allow it. Praise God. So, so once your faith is being tried, instead of grumbling and saying, ah, can you imagine? Ah, hey, where is God? Where is God? Relax and, and think, of it, think of it. What do I do now? How do I fix this situation? How do I, how do I get around this? See? Sometimes you hear people say, God is trying to teach me a lesson. Now, there's a truth to that. But the challenge most times is, we don't even know the lesson that to learn from what, what the situation. But you see, I'll tell you this truth. Every situation that happens around you, there's a lesson to pick out from it. Praise God. Our time is up for today. Now, I hope, I hope you're gaining something from this. But we're going to continue tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.